fashion insider friends. What is up? This is the Fashion Crimes Podcast, where I cover all things fashion, style, shopping, style inspiration, and interview incredible small business owners who are changing the fashion industry for the better. Yes, I'm the best friend you never knew you needed and the poster child for fashion over 40. And I mean, way after 40. Say it with me, fashion and style are your friends, not your enemies. I'm Holly Cates, your favorite personal stylist, and let's keep it real, the only Holly you need to know. Turn it up, because I got a lot to say, and I am super stoked you're here. It's been a fabulous, fashionable week here at the Fashion Crimes Podcast, I must say. Now that Fashion Week is wrapped up, and I had my 10-year wedding anniversary party here in the ATL, and I wanted to put the dress code on the invitation, which was quote unquote fabulous. That's the dress code. And Jonathan said that was mean and people could wear whatever they wanted to. Annoying. Anywho, if you know me and you know any event of mine has a fabulosity quotient that is required upon arrival. Most everyone did look fabulous. So a great time was had by all. I can't believe I've been married for 10 years. Wow. Jonathan, he's the man. I'm just saying. I'm so very lucky and grateful he's stuck with me for so long. Loving this journey for him. Just kidding. Loving this journey for me. As I've been checking the DMs religiously, religiously people, wanting people to write me and ask me questions, and I've had more than one person ask me about mother of the groom dresses. Notice how I did not say mother of the bride. This is mother of the groom. Now, you might be thinking, what the hell is the difference? And technically speaking, there isn't one, but it's just a different mindset, I think, when your son is getting married instead of your daughter. To all you boy moms out there, it's just different. You're not, hopefully, planning the wedding. You're planning some things probably, but you don't have the pressure of the whole event. You get to step back a bit. At least I think in my case, because my son is getting married next year, There is a level of pressure that's taken off when it's your son and not your daughter getting married. But let's be honest, we all know that all he has to do is show up and we're good. (laughs) So we can relax a little. But I've had more than one complaint about the difficulty of finding a dress for their son's wedding. Don't worry, my friends, you've come to the right place. Yes. I have designer suggestions, of course, that are all on my Pinterest board that I made just for you. Not every dress will apply to you, but you can get the general idea of what to look for that is more updated instead of what the bridal industry thinks that you should wear. When you think about mother of the bride or groom, it just sounds old and tired. Sorry, not sorry. It just does. In my opinion, the bridal industry has capitalized on every single minute detail of every second of somebody's wedding. But the mothers, oh, they drop the ball on that. It's a big hell no for me. Just go to any bridal gallery, showroom, or boutique, and they will have a quote, mother of the bride section. That shit is so outdated. Fashion crime. So what should you be looking for? We'll get to that. We'll get to that. But more importantly, we're going to talk about what not to wear, which is, duh, my favorite subject. What I've learned is that shopping for this event comes with a myriad of complaints from the person who already hates to shop, but now has that pressure to really get it right for all the world to see. It's not fun, I know, but believe me, this is achievable for you. With my help, we're going to reveal the light at the end of the tunnel, and I want you to know I am on your side. I mean, I am the best friend you never knew you needed in fashion, so there's that. We're going to address common issues and pain points that mothers of the grooms and brides usually complain about. So let's see if this sounds like you or anyone you know. Okay, great. Here we go. Starting with number three of the top three complaints most mothers of the groom have. And when people say this to me, you know, I can't hide what my face says. I'm just saying, but I've had more than one person say this to me. I don't want to upstage the bride. So here's the thing. That's adorable. I mean, that's not what I really want to say. What I really want to say is bitch, please. Because you can try to convince me that that's a valid concern, but unless you're a fucking supermodel, I would say the chances of that are pretty slim. Okay. 
get your head out of the toilet and understand these are modern times. You're not going to upstage the bride. I'm not buying it. It's the lamest excuse in the book. I know this sounds mean, but let me translate what that sentence really means. All you're really saying is that you want to be in your fashion comfort zone. You don't want to try that hard. And you're already setting yourself up to fail because you want little to no attention on you. You might not be saying this consciously, but probably unconsciously, especially if you don't like to shop or hate getting dressed or really don't like being dressed up. But look, let me be the first to put this in perspective for you. Somebody wants to marry your son, okay? You need to be so fucking happy right now. This should supersede all. You should be thanking God, Allah, Jesus, the universe, that you did something right and that you have raised a decent, respectable, productive member of society that somebody wants to spend the rest of their life with. Um, Hello, score. The day your son comes to you and says that he wants to get married, you should breathe a sigh of relief right then and there. I'm just saying, can we just not celebrate that for a minute? I mean, honestly, let's go back to when your kids were younger and everything was embarrassing, embarrassing. Don't say this. Don't do that. It's embarrassing. Know this. Just because your kids are adults doesn't mean they aren't still looking to you for guidance as you are still setting and always will set an example for them. I call this when I work with boy not moms, I like to use the term husband training, okay? It starts at age five, just saying. We want you to set the example for dressing well for your kids. So when you care about what they look like, eventually they will too. We want them to have manners, not be, I'm only talking about boys, okay, people? I'm only talking about boys. We want them to have manners, not be, be animals at the table, learn life skills like use deodorant and general grooming practices. When our sons excel at these tasks, there's just a little bit of relief as they get older, because let's be honest, we want them to move out and be someone else's problem, okay? I have a very, very different conversation with girl moms, believe me. They are still those kids on the inside. You need to show up for them. Show them how much you care about them by caring about yourself. You'll have these pictures For the rest of your life, it's going to sit on your mantle for the next 30 years, okay? This is an important event where your son needs to feel that you feel confident about yourself so he will feel confident too. You want him to be proud that you're sitting in the front row. Whether he recognizes it or not, on some level, they're still looking up to you. You will feel excited to get dressed when you find something that really feels authentic to you. In the grand scheme of things, All you really need is one dress, maybe two. Seriously. So stop thinking that the bride isn't going to be the star. She is, okay? But you need to represent. When shopping for a mother of the groom dress, it's all about casting your net wide, looking both in person and online, not just one or the other. It's time consuming. I know this. Not shopping too early. That's a big no-no. We're going to talk about that. And getting something that levels you up and elevates your style. Be better than predictable and wear something unexpected. Does that mean crazy? No, it just means unexpected for you. Not a dress with lace sleeves and a jacket. Um, No. If you look at Mother of the Bride dress, that's what you're going to find. And that shit is tired and it's predictable. Here's the number two complaint that I always get. I don't want to show my arms, my legs, or this or that or what have you. Now, I think this is a bigger subject for a bigger conversation, but I want to bring it up because everybody tells me the exact same thing. When you shop in general, it's not just for a special occasion dress. Anytime you shop, you're holding yourself back when you say things like that. And here's why. Everyone, young, old, fat, skinny, Everybody has body issues, but when you come into the situation putting limitations on yourself like that, you're not open, okay? You need to be open to anything and everything that might work because you don't know what you're going to like. You don't know. You might be pleasantly surprised that a dress you would never even try on might work for you. So set yourself up for success by not saying anything negative about your body or what you are willing or not willing to wear. 
you never know what might work for you. So let's put this in perspective. If you say, I don't want to show my legs, does that mean, you know, I'm going to make you wear a micro mini dress? No, but it doesn't mean you can't show a little leg or reject every dress that might offer a leg showing type of situation. So what I'm saying is stop holding yourself back and don't go into the store or into a shopping opportunity with limitations. It just doesn't do you any favors, okay? The number one complaint I always get is about money, always, or being very apprehensive to spend money on themselves for this. As much as this is a very, very valid concern, there are ways to get around this to stay in a certain price bracket, whatever that may be for you. But hear me out. When you don't shop a lot, you're not familiar with how much things cost or why they cost what they cost. As far as any big purchase goes, you really get what you pay for. Having a budget is completely normal, but when it comes to evening wear, it may seem frivolous to spend money on a very high-end gown for a one-time occasion, but think about it this way. If your kids are getting married, if y'all are in that circuit of everybody's getting, everybody's kids are getting married, you're probably going to wear this dress to somebody else's wedding too. If it's too formal for someone else's wedding, you could change the length of the dress to make it less formal and then bring up the hem. You could change the sleeve, etc. Secondhand is always an option too. There are many great websites to try to find something gently used, which is an amazing way to stay within a certain price range. You do have to be a very seasoned shopper to be able to do that and find what you're looking for. But if you want to know more about how to shop secondhand for something like this, make sure you hit me up and I'll certainly answer your questions and do a part two to that. But if you're like, I can only spend X dollars and that's it. I can't go a penny over. Then that might be a good option for you. Let's put the look together for your son's wedding. Here's what you need. You need a dress, shapewear if necessary, shoes, jewelry, and a bag. You might need a coat. You might not. I don't know. I helped someone not too long ago for her son's wedding. And she claimed when I talked about the bag, an evening bag, she said, oh, I don't need a bag because I just give all my stuff to my husband. He's just going to carry it. I said, no, girl, no, uh uh-uh. And she said, what do you mean? I said, you're not going to make your husband carry all of your crap on your kid's wedding day. Don't do that. Then you're nagging him every five seconds for your lipstick. You're a grown woman. Get an evening bag. Sorry, you can't skimp on that. You you just can't. Get an evening bag, whatever that means for you. And I have a couple of options, of course, on the Pinterest board. So not carrying a bag because you want your husband to carry your stuff, that's a fashion crime. Your bag is part of your look. You don't carry it down the aisle, but it is part of your look. You must have an evening bag non negotiable Again, some examples, of course, are going to be on my board. And you can do super, super inexpensive evening bags. Very inexpensive, as low as like $35, $45, up to however much you want to pay. You have to know what to shop for. And once you know, we just went over all the stuff. How do you shop for it? How? Okay, great, Holly. You told me everything to get. Now, what do I do next? Like I said earlier. You start by casting your net wide. So what does that really mean? Let's say you live in a small town. You better get to the nearest big town to look in person. You have to look in person. This is a non-negotiable, okay? It doesn't mean you have to buy something, but you have to look in person. You need to see it, touch it, feel it, get an understand of what type of support you might need, if any. Is it itchy? Is it see-through? Is it non-supportive fabric, what size you might be. You have to understand that all designers cut differently. You might be one size in a pant with one designer, but you could be something totally different in an evening gown dependent on the brand. That's why you have to see what you're working with in person. Some brands that I recommend for dresses to start with, you know, and these are on your Pinterest board, Tom and Linda Platt, Terry John, Badgley Mishka, Kiara Boney, Zach Posen, Black Halo, and McDougal. That's just a start and so many more. You also need to think about undergarments when shopping in person for a dress. Do you need shapewear? Do you need a strapless bra, et cetera? You will be behind if you only order online and make the process 
much, much slower because your sizing is limited. You only order online after and only after you have tried a few things on in person in store and you have an idea of what you're looking for. There's more to choose from and you might see something there in person that you didn't see online. Also, you can ask for help in the store. If you get someone that's good, it could really change your entire experience. Now, I want to talk about this for a second. Going into a specialty store is the first thing I would do in order to have someone actually qualified to help you. Try to find somebody who knows the product and can give great suggestions according to what your needs are. When you're looking online, if you don't know what you're looking for, it just makes everything harder. That's why I say you have to shop in person first. After you've done your homework, which I hope you're going to do your homework, which I think you are, and you've looked in person, you can order 10 dresses online to try on at home. Understand, you do this when you've decided the type of dress you're looking for. Maybe have narrowed it down to the designer. Or if you have connections, maybe a store can send you some things on consignment. So what that means is you give them a credit card, they send you five things, you keep one or two and send the rest back and they only charge what you keep. That's what sending on consignment means. If you're working with somebody closely at a specialty store, they might choose things for you that you haven't even thought about. You might want to Leave it to chance and say, I'm looking for this type of dress. Send me what you have if you're that open. And then they can send that to you on consignment. It's a great option if you can create a relationship like that with a store or a brand. A lot of showrooms in New York, they do see private clients, like especially Tom and Linda Platt. I just had the pleasure of interviewing Drew and he was doing a private trunk show in Tootsie's here in Atlanta. And so I interviewed him and he says people come into the showroom all the time. They have a million colors to choose from. These silhouettes, you can add a sleeve here, take it up there, add this. So it's a really great experience if you want that kind of specific help. The next mistake that I don't want you to make is not shopping too early. Please, I beg you, I beg you. Not only does this speak for yourself, but when you shop too early, it never fails. You keep looking and you find something else you like better. It's inevitable. Even when I work with brides, it's never a good idea to shop way too early. Then you're just asking for the universe to make you question your choice only to find something else better at the last minute. I'm just saying, if you are the mother of the groom, you do not need to look at anything seriously more than five months in advance. Seriously, serious. Even that's a little early. Six months too early. Three months is really about the right time. If you're not getting something custom, if you're getting something custom, it's a different conversation. But if you're buying something off the rack, three months is really about the sweet spot in the timeline, even though it might seem a little tight, but that is more than enough time for you to find a dress. But you want to get something in season not that you're not going to stare at for an entire year. And that will seem new and exciting because you're going to get it and then you're going to wear it quickly after. Believe me, the newness wears off if you get it too early. Three months is plenty of time to find something that you can make work for you because you will have done your homework and know what you're looking for before you get to that three-month deadline. Getting something that levels you up and perhaps elevates your style, this is the goal here. Are you going to get something that's predictable? No. Are you going to get something that's lacy and old lady looking? Hell no. You're going to look at dresses that are dependent on what type of wedding it is and is nicer, something that's nicer than what you would normally buy. So that's where I come in. If your son's wedding is black tie, then let's just say you could wear sequins or beading or something unexpected like a midi dress, which is something that comes to like halfway down your shin. If it's at two o'clock in the afternoon, obviously it's not black tie and you can wear something not beaded or sequined. We went over the dress codes before in what to wear to our class reunion episode. So if you did not listen to that, please go back and listen to that episode. However, the rules are even more magnified now that you are going to be in the spotlight. There's a lot of factors that can go into a type of wedding that somebody might have. So ask for help if you're not sure or if someone is doing something untraditional and you can't figure it out. There's a gazillion dresses in the world. You only need to find one. You can do this. Send me a DM or an email 
and ask me what you need. And you might just get a shout out on the next podcast. Okay. So for this week, shout out to Cape Wishes, who wrote in asking me about bras. Um, we're besties now. Duh. Jurgenda Pulver and Lisa, who wrote in this week. Y'all, thank you so much. It is really what keeps me going and gives me topics that y'all need to know about instead of me rambling on and on about something that you really don't care about. I'm just saying. And what I really love is that I think y'all are surprised that when I actually do give you a shout out and then you write back to me and then you say, oh my God, I heard my shout out. Thank you so much. I love to do shout outs. So keep writing in. Help me help you. This is how you learn and increase your fabulosity quotient. Duh. Listen, I hope that this helps and gives you some specific guidelines on what to do when starting to look for a dress. Don't shop too early. I'm begging you, don't. Cast your net wide. Make sure you give yourself enough time, but don't shop when the wedding's in a year. It's, it's not necessary. It's just not, okay? Second, ask for help in the store. If you want to get something custom made, Figure out how you can do that, and then you make an appointment, and they will tell you when you need to come in for your appointment. Also, when you shop online, order a few choices, make sure, see what you like, see what you don't like, and it might be a process where you shop in person, you shop online, you shop in person, you shop online. When you give yourself enough time, then there's no rush, and you really don't need more than four, three to four months. You just don't. Because you want to buy something that is in season. You don't want to buy something from last year and then say, oh, well, it's going to be 12 degrees and now it's 70 degrees. And then you're screwed. So you just don't really know. So it's best to wait. I knew this was going to be a big one. Thanks for sticking with me until the end. Don't sweat about the money. You can find a dress for a good deal. Get shapewear if you need it. Make sure you get shoes, jewelry, and a bag. Get your hair done. The bride's going to get her hair done, her makeup done. Get your hair and makeup done too. I mean, even if you don't want to, I always say, if, you don't, if you're not that kind of person, if you don't want anybody touching your hair or your makeup, just pick one. I am so happy when people do my hair and makeup because they do it better than me, but choose one. Maybe you get your hair done if you do your own makeup or vice versa. So it's just, you should feel special on this day. Please share this with somebody you know. If somebody you know needs help or needs me to yell at them to get it together for their son's wedding, okay, please sign up for our email list. So you can get this fashion content delivered straight to your inbox every single week. I don't know how your day can get any better. This has been the Fashion Press Podcast, and I am the only Holly you need to know. The hostess with the mostest and the best friend you never knew you needed in fashion. Y'all have a fabulous, fashionable week. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you next week. Bye.